Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning to the students online as well. Uh, thank you for joining. All right, so how was your week? Good. All right, so we, uh, everyone's got your books, right? Huh? Yeah. Okay. okay, so those online, uh, feel free to just uh, pull up the notes and also uh, you know, just walk along with us even as we are studying together. Okay, so as of last week, we completed chapter three on your notes. You see that power and love, right? We talked about how Jesus combined these two elements in his ministry. He walked in power and he walked in love. And so as believers, you and I must have this combination of, of, of power and of love. But it should not be, okay, I'm only powerful and I can do all things. No. Uh, it's also out of love, right? So when we minister to people, uh, it should be out of love for people that their hearts may be changed, right? Now, if we have, if we think of it only in one way, right? Okay, I want to be a, you know, a preacher who can bring healing and deliverance and do the prophetic. And if I don't have love, the Apostle Paul writes, it's meaningless. Yes or no? Right? Our ministry, the foundation of Jesus' ministry was love. And out of that love came the power of God. Right? So even as we grow in ministry in, and even as we are learning, let us be, in a sense, a quality in each one of us. Right? That love of God will portray the power of God. Don't focus only the power of God and forget about the love of God. Or don't focus only on the love of God and then forget about the power of God. Right? So we must learn to combine these two, like how Jesus did. Now, most of you will go back and serve in your churches. right? And when you do that, remember, when you're ministering, you minister out of the love. When you do that, you minister the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the, that's the anointing that God has given us. Amen? Okay, so let's go to the next chapter. We're going to chapter 4. Any questions? Any of you have any questions? Any questions? Any of you were able to try to share the gospel? Try to share the gospel with people? I know that the in-person students went to a couple of outreaches. Did you all do? Did anyone get an opportunity? No, I just gave the traction that way. <laughs> yeah, it can be scary at times. Uh, sometimes we may have a lot of questions and we may feel, hey, this is not what I came for Bible college. I came to study the word. I don't stand on the road. How many of you felt that? It's okay. It's nothing wrong to feel that. So that's why this chapter, next chapter is called Overcoming. Inhibitions. What is the meaning of inhibition? Something that we must do, but we feel we should not do. I know we must do, but we feel we can't do it. Something stops us. How many of you, you know, maybe some of us here in line as well, you know, you, know, you want to learn an instrument, you've learned it, but something stops you to go and play in front of people. What could those reasons be? What, one, oh, okay, tell me. Insecurity, okay. What else? A lot of musicians here. Shy, stage fear, okay. What else? Confidence, okay. Fear of? Fear of making mistakes. What else? Answers, no? All of the applause. You play the keyboard, no? So you should know. Initially, you went and started playing in front of everybody. What made you to, you know, to stop going and playing? Like initially, why you didn't go? Was it shyness? Confidence was fixed. So, so we all have inhibitions, right? But how do we overcome those inhibitions? Now, not all of us are, you know, made in a way that we can go talk to people, give out tracks. And no, this is what Jesus did for you. Some of us are not interested in that. 
we we want to only sit and worship the lord for 24 hours i can do 24 hours worship no problem don't send me for ministry and there are some who i can preach i can prepare 100 sermons and preach don't send me for ministry right we all we all go through these things in life and it's natural some of us may feel hey i'm doing children's ministry so i don't want to you know be involved in these uh, outreaches and uh, we may have many reasons right uh, but like what we studied in the first chapter god has commissioned us to minister to people right just like how, how god has commissioned us for praises to praise him to worship him god has commissioned us to preach the word in the church god has commissioned us to walk in the holy spirit to be anointed in god the same way god has commissioned us to share the gospel with people now whether we like it or no god will bring opportunities in our life to share the gospel right? how many of you have friends or you know people around you your relatives like they know they you know they've got everything fine with them and you never got an opportunity to share anybody here you, you feel that you never got an opportunity to share never got an opportunity to share okay you never got an opportunity to share okay what about uh, people who you know uh, you know that you know they're going through a difficult season and you know that they don't know jesus were you able to share the gospel with them right so we we, we have a lot of questions in our mind right and come back to music you know when i was when they said okay you lead the worship i was very scared I said no no because the other people are much better than me right they were much better than me what if i fail in this what if i you know play the wrong chord what if i play the wrong song right? what if my voice doesn't reach that pitch what if the congregation don't like the song what if I miss the beat? I have so many questions. So I said, no, I'm not doing this. I like to talk to people, so I'll go and do that. But I knew that, hey, if God is, if I want to reach my full potential, what God has for me, I have to overcome these inhibitions. Right? Uh, I'll tell you something which I think not many of us know, but some of lot of our friends and church folks know that from the time of a small till 10th standard i never went on the stage till 10th standard right so his stage fear even now i have stage fear i'm just not showing it <laughs> till 10th standard dance program even in these children's when you're small, you had you know, all those singing programs and dancing programs and all the children's day program, teacher's day programs. I never went on a stage. I was too fearful. But then started why I went on the stage to go take my marks card. <laughs> Graduation ceremony, they take the marks card and smile and run photo and I ran away from there. Now tell me, how can this kind of a person begin to learn an instrument and play in the front of hundreds and thousands of people. It all started by overcoming those small inhibitions. Small. What will they think of me? Now, it could be something very insecure. I was very thin when I was small, very thin. So I always thought, OK, you know, I'm a very soft person, so I don't want to, I don't want to go on stage. People make fun of me. I never went. I had to come to a place. So hey, to step out. Now the reason I'm giving this example is because maybe some of us here feel I'm not called for this, right? Uh, but God is a God who wants each one of us to reach our potential. It's like God is saying, "I want to give you this." We say, "No, God, you just give me more of this, or give me this, or give me that." Right? So basically to be open to what God is. Even now, you know, the other day I was talking to uh, the team in uh, 
at East, we have the little church that I go to, ABC East. And I was sitting there and uh, I had to lead the worship and then I had to even share the word. And I've led worship maybe thousands of times over the past 15 years. Right? There were about maybe 80 people in church. But I was sitting there and I was nervous. And uh, I know I was sitting next to him and saying, Why are you nervous? I don't know. It, it's there. It's something that I am, right? By nature, I'm a person who. But I keep telling myself, no, this is what God's called me for. Step out. Now, this happened 15 years back. Right? Now, even after this class, supernatural art, I may look confident. But it'll be there. But I know that God wants me to do this to bless people. And then eventually it goes away. So same thing with ministering to people. Eventually, you may be nervous, maybe fearful. But as you keep doing it, it goes away. Right? So let's look at this, right? Overcoming inhibitions, reasons why we may sometimes hesitate to share Jesus with people and uh, how we can overcome them. First one, not knowing what to say. Right? Not knowing what to say. What should I say? Right? This is because we, we may be ignorant of the fact of, of what the gospel is. Uh, so it's very important as, as we, as you and I, as believers and we are getting into ministry, we must know what we are doing. Right? We must know. Now you're leading, if you're, you're in worship, you're worshiping God, what are you doing? What is worshiping God? Pastor Roshan's teaching. What, what is worship? What is praise and worship? Okay. What is the point of praise and worship? Okay. What is? Huh? Adoration. Okay. Very good. All are right. Right. The moment we think, okay, if somebody asks you, why are you praising? Why are you praising? Why are you singing these songs and what are you going to say? So if a person from a different faith comes and says, why are you having 20 meals, three songs? What will you say? Why are you all singing in such a way? Who is Jesus? That's a normal question, no? They ask. Who is Jesus? You did about Jesus. Okay. Good. What will you tell him about Jesus? Now he's there, he doesn't want to know about Jesus. He wants to know why you're singing three songs with the instruments. You worship, you know. You're doing worship. Why? What will you say? Expression of? Okay. Well, be confident. You do it every day, no? Gratitude. Very good. What else? Francis. Huh? Or, no, it's okay. Say. It's your way of worship. Of uh, that's right. That's right. Nothing wrong in that. It's your it's your way of uh, you know worshiping God. So, what we're trying to bring out is, why are you worshiping God? Right? We can say. Okay, when I worship God, God's presence comes and fills me. And it's not about me. I am a changed person. The work of God is changing my life. And this is what worship does to me. We're explaining it. Now, if I don't know what is worship, and somebody from another faith comes and asks, I'll say, I don't know. They told me to do, I'm doing it. Right? So not knowing what to say is one of the main reasons why we avoid sharing the gospel with people. Right? Now, don't keep this picture of only being outside. Right? I'm on the street or I'm in front of the mall or I'm in front of the college. No. It can also lead to a friend in his home. You must know what to say. Right? You need to be prepared. Right? How did Jesus wash away your sins? They'll ask you. Right? So what, what are you going to say? So sometimes we may hesitate. Oh, 
I don't know what to say for this. So whether I not share the gospel. What if they ask, how can God become a man? What am I going to say for this? I don't know. So better I not share the gospel. Right? So sometimes the fear of not knowing what to say, we will stop sharing the gospel. Now we must overcome that. What must we do? We must practice. We must prepare. And the previous class for second years I was teaching, we were talking about the ministry of the teacher. So a teacher always prepares. Preparation time is very important. So all of us must prepare ourselves. And probably uh, after a couple of classes, we'll do for the on-campus students, we'll do uh, uh, role plays, right? We'll do role plays on how to share the gospel. For the online students, you can join in as well, right? Uh, we'll do role plays. But practice, prepare. Some of the ways I practice worship or preaching is I stand in front of the mirror and for one and a half hours straight, just lead worship, whichever song comes. I just initially I couldn't lead for half an hour. God, what is this? So you know, you're leading, you're searching for the clock. Where's the clock? When will this get over? Initially, but over time, you practice, you prepare. There were times I'm just my guitar. It's been three and a half hours. It's been four hours. Don't know it. Why? It's just it's an overflow. Right? It's from inside. Right? So as you keep practicing, you will become better at it. And anything. Right? Even you know, you guys are leading worship here, you're sounding good, but it can sound better also, no? Right? So by the time you are finished two years, I'm sure you're not gonna be you're gonna be much better than this. Because you're gonna practice, you're gonna learn. And when you go out to your call to your churches. They'll see that hey, you've been through. Why? Because you have practiced. You have prepared. Same thing with sharing the gospel. Be prepared with questions. Ask yourself questions. What do you think they will ask? Learn about other faiths. Right? Learn about what their understanding is. So this is a little additional step that we must take. Right? Find common interests. Read a lot. How many of you like to read? It's on the ask. Two of them like to read, three of them like to read, others don't like to read. Okay, read. <laughs> right. uh, uh, again, I was sharing with a couple of students. You know, I was never a reader. I don't like to read. Right. Monday before the exam, study like this, go and write something and pass it up. Never a reader. But after I came to know the Lord, I knew that if I wanted to become a teacher or a preacher, God is not going to open the heavens and give me all the wisdom and I receive it on my own. Is that going to happen? God would say, go, sit, read it, and then I will tell you. I'm not going to spoon feed you. That's what God is going to say. Yes, and so if we want to become something in, in you know, we want to become a preacher, teacher, worship leader, anything, uh, we need to be prepared for Preparation is very important. Right? So prepare yourself, even as you minister to people. Let's read 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. It's a common verse, yet it's a wonderful, wonderful verse. Now, let me give you a context to this verse. Okay? 1 Peter 3, 15. Peter is writing to the church. Uh, they are both Jews. And they are Greeks, right? Now they are all very, a lot of them are very learned people. They have a lot, the Greeks are very learned. They have a lot of questions. They have a lot of ideas, a lot of strategies that are going on. First Peter 3.15. So Paul is writing to the church and he says, sorry, Peter is writing to the church. This is what he says. Yes, somebody can read. First Peter 3.15. But sanctify the Lord God in the house now as to the next day, Mm. Be ready to give a reason for the hope that is in you. Right? So Paul is writing, I'm sorry, Peter is writing to the believers, the, the very highly learned, and he's also writing to those who are probably not learned, maybe fishermen. And he's saying, be ready to give a defense for the gospel. Does he say, be ready to give uh, to always be at church? 
be ready for the worship team be ready for uh, you know uh, praise and worship or be ready for the uh, supernatural armor so what does he say be ready to give a defense for the gospel people will come and say things they will ask you questions you have to be ready right know what you are know who you are know your identity and be able to give a defense two feeling that no one is interested in the gospel now how many of you have gone through this right i have everything is good in their life they don't need the gospel leave them alone now it's a misconception of our own we think they don't need it but maybe they are hurting in some way right so sometimes we look at a person we see okay he's happy he's joyful everything is going well in their life so i don't need to share the gospel with them but that is far from the truth right they may look happy they may seem joyful they may have the money they may have everything that they need in the material world but they may be lost inside right they may be in emptiness inside so we are not to judge people by their outward appearance okay looks like everything is fine now this could be a reason for us from stopping to share the gospel right where we we look and we see that you know everything is fine in their life but remember that everyone is searching for a purpose everyone is searching for meaning in life so you can share right? whether they are fine in physically whether they are fine mentally whatever it is you can share the gospel like it could be a friend who has everything all right going on fine in his life you can still share the gospel with them because everybody needs a savior yes the uh, job yeah see we will also talk about uh, you know in role plays we'll talk about some of the responses that we we'll get back right uh when we are sharing the gospel there will be times people will accept people will reject it now it's not new did they reject the gospel in the early church did they reject jesus that's that's a common thing that's why paul writes and he says they have ears but they cannot hear they have eyes but they cannot see the truth right? what we are doing is we are presenting the gospel to them now sometimes that also they'll get offended Say, hey, I let me tell you about my other side. Let them say. <laughs> Many a times people have said, "Let me tell you about my faith." So I've listened to them, right? Uh, uh, again, when it comes to preparation, many a times if it's uh, if it's a Muslim that I'm sharing with, uh, you know, I'll go back and read what about their faith. What is it that they understand? What is it that they uh, believe in? Believe in. So so that I have some kind of a uh, base out of which i can talk to them right so they will reject shon they will there will be people who will reject there will be people who will accept also they'll say hey can i speak to you again or uh, or sometimes they may say uh, i'm not very interested now i'll talk to you some other time uh, so you make it mixed response but what you're doing is you're sowing the seed of god's word into their heart right the seed is sown this is what jesus did Now remember, we're not coming. Remember, chapter two, we studied. We're not coming on our own strength or our own ability. We're coming through the gospel, which is the power of God under salvation. And so we are in this place of freedom. So God, I'm presenting Holy Spirit to you to the world in your life. Right. So all through, when we look at uh, lifestyle in terms of evangelism, you will have mixed responses. but we cannot control their response what we can do is we can put the seed in their lives there was this friend of mine who was from a different faith i would share the gospel to him for years and years he would just not accept it years maybe 2 3 years of sharing the gospel sharing sharing there are many people who accept it but this guy is just not accepting the gospel right sharing sharing gave him verse after verse nothing it will just go over him or he will not be interested at all 
this one time i called him for a worship evening i said hey just come now we'll go and uh, we'll finish the worship and then we'll go somewhere so he came right now during some song all of a sudden he began to cry right and after crying he accepted the lord jesus christ right now what has happened for two years the seed has been in his heart now he may not have accepted it but the seed was so years later during the worship there was some i forget what but two lines of the song ministered to him. it just touched him I said yeah this is what god did for me and so i'm living a sinful life there was a conviction there was a change but it didn't happen immediately it happened after many years right so our responsibility is to put the seed of god's word right now third one fear of rejection and ridicule yes that's mm -hmm. sharing on any of these two people on the question of the answer yes so there are a lot of responses right there will be atheists there will be people who are from islam hinduism jainism buddhism a lot of them so to look at each one we will look in the in the coming chapters how we should share the gospel with somebody who doesn't believe in god there are people who believe in god we can start off in you know, god with this but what about people who don't believe so that we'll see in the coming chapters okay and we'll also learn we'll do some role plays uh, later on okay fear of rejection or ridicule yes sir Thank you, Sean. Yeah. So Sean was saying that he has a friend who is an atheist, and he was able to just share the simple gospel and just present it to them, uh, but not force it on them. So uh, I've got a comment here from Krisha, uh, who says she tried to share the gospel to underprivileged kids. I distributed some sweets to get their attention and told them that Jesus loves them. But one of the mothers came and said, "Jesus loves them. Why?" why doesn't you get them admission in a good school how to handle such criticism <laughs> yeah so krishna these these kind of things will come see uh, jesus is not somebody who uh, we choose to be pick up from our pocket who can uh, you know just uh, give us whatever we need right uh, now we'll talk more about this but just to answer your question very uh, like this this for now when we accept the gospel when we accept the lord jesus does not mean that everything will go our way right uh, now when we look at the scriptures the apostle paul and the other disciples accepted jesus but what happened after that did they say oh very good you know believe us please stand we'll clap for you they were persecuted they were beaten right so not always things will go the way we want to right what we present to them is not a jesus who you believe in me and everything will happen for you what we present to them is you believe in jesus and your life will be changed your your sins are forgiven now whether you go to a government school whether you go to a private school no school can wash away our sins what is it no school can wash away our sins so we are not presenting a jesus who can meet all our needs jesus i believe you then you give me a good school or you give me a good car or give me a good house no it, it is an overflow when we believe in him and we trust in him and his blessings follow us right so so we must move move it the other way krishna so when you are sharing the gospel say this is what jesus did for us it's more about our soul salvation experience uh, than meeting needs yes he will meet our other needs uh, 
but it's more about the soul, the spirit, what God does for us. Right, thank you. Okay, fear of rejection and ridicule. Um, people will make fun of you. Yeah. So yeah, that 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 all those things are there. Like people say, why are you sharing the gospel? You just leave it. Leave them. Right. You don't have to force them. Right. Uh, but if they're open to it, you share. Right? If they feel you're you know coming on to us, don't share with me. Then leave it. If there's already opposition, you can't help it, right? You, you can't do much. You can't say, no, you sit, listen. You can't do that. So just move on, right? What did Jesus do? When he went into in certain towns, he told his disciples also, you go in there. If they accept you, sit with them, drink, eat, and be happy with whatever they've given and move on. But if they don't, shake the dust off your feet and move on. Right? So we just move on. Right? We, we can't hold on to uh, things, right? So, yeah, that's the perspective that we have got, especially now in Christianity. You know, they say, you know, you people come from, you get money from different countries. You come, you will build one school, then you will, uh, you know, build one hospital, then the poor people will come. You will give free education, free uh, hospital care, and then you will say, become a believer. That's far from the truth, right? As, as in ministry, in Christianity, we have people who serve. But we, I don't think we've come to a place where you say, you do this, then you will get admission. Or you do this, and then you know you'll, you can get into the hospital for your medical bills. No. It's service unto community. But people have taken it the wrong way, which we, we cannot uh, you know, control their care. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so Sean, here's the thing, right? uh, as a believer, that's why the first in chapter one we saw, right? As a believer, you should know, you and I, all of us, should know our authority. We may see things, but what does the Bible say? The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Right? So that will not affect you. Right? Of course, you, you're, you're not agreeing to it. You look away, it's, your, it's up to you. You see it also, it's not going to affect your life. Why? Because you know who you are. You know who's inside of you. You know who's working inside of you. Right? After this class, I'll share a couple of instances where uh, you know, it was quite scary, but God is able to do that. Right? God is able to make us understand that who's in us is greater than he that is in the world. Right? So knowing your identity is important there. So you know, now they say, why don't you come here? And you know, why don't you come meet me? Or you come inside that. You can avoid those. This is just for learning. But it's not going to affect you at all because you're bigger and greater than that, right? There will be times people will ridicule you and reject you, but we need to learn how to respond with grace. Respond graciously. People will say, hey, I don't like Jesus. I don't want Jesus. I don't want to be a Christian. I don't want to hear anything about Jesus. I can be your friend, but if you keep talking about Jesus, I will not come near you. What will you say that time? The only people know who will say that. What, will, what do we have to say that time? We respond graciously. We don't say, okay, you know, and Jesus, I'll see you and your friend. <laughs> no, we don't do that, right? We respond graciously. You say, 
See, all I did was I shared what happened to me in my life, how God changed my life. If you're not interested, it's all right. Leave it. Right? Just respond graciously. Now, the wrong way to respond is who are you to tell me? Why India is a free nation? <laughs> These are getting agitated, getting angry, right? These are the wrong ways of uh, doing the ministry, right? Let me tell you just one thing that happened, right? It was a simple problem, and this there was this prayer meeting. So there's a church. There was a prayer meeting happening happening in a residential area, right? So every three days a week, they would meet and they are playing the tambourine and the, the what do you call that the Congo thing, no? Uh, yeah, Congo, Congo, whatever. and with the tambourine, and they're having the 30 minutes of worship and then loud prayer and everything. Is it good? Is it good? Worship, prayer, everything? For us, it's good. Okay, but what about the other people? Right? So, what happened was these people came and requested the, uh, the family, the decent family. They came and said, See, you're too long. Either reduce the volume, and it's three days a week. We have tuitions, all these things happen. They request it, but they didn't listen. They said, no, this is God's world. God has given us this entire world. We have to make all Christians. He continued. He continued again. Next thing he knew, the cops have come. Police have come to his house, saying, stop the whole thing. Now, is that persecution? No. So on the video, when we see it, what do we feel? So I, I spoke to the pastor. What happened? He told me the whole story. I said, so he said, see, they're doing this. It's wrong. I said, it's not wrong. God has given us wisdom. It's a residential area. They have come and requested you. You can tone it down. Doesn't mean in prayer you have to keep screaming the whole time. You can do soft prayers. You can do soft prayers. You can do soft prayers. But he said, no, persecution, see, it's not persecution, right? So we need the wisdom, right, on certain things. People will reject, people will ridicule us. They know how to respond in the right way. So I told this person, now, before, if you had just lowered it, you could have had your prayer. Now, not even one day in the week you can have. You can't have it. They won't let you. Because when they asked you in a good, in a good way, you your answer was not gracious. As a believer, the most the best thing to do was to say, "Okay, we'll sorry to disturb you. We'll make it." Through. They are not at the church; they are in a house. And the house is all next to each other. It is disturbing. Right? So we must understand uh, to how to give gracious responses to people, right? Uh, Many people came and ridiculed Jesus. What did Jesus do? In some places he explained himself, some places he just talked to me. Right? Let's read Matthew chapter 10, verse 11 to 16. Matthew 10, 11 to 16. Now, and and when you go into any household, leave it. If any household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it, but if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever you notice, do not get your words. When you depart on their travel personally, shake off the dust of your feet. Assure me, I speak, it will be more. Or they will put them there or so long time in the day of judgment, then for the rest. Yeah, thank you. So we see here it says that like the apostles, count it a joy when you are rejected and persecuted for the sake of Jesus. The apostles say, remember Peter and James are going to prison, they said, count it a joy. Paul is writing the letter uh, to, of the Philippians. He's writing to the Philippian church, right? And he's saying, "What? Rejoice in the Lord." Twenty-six times he says, "Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord." Why are you so sad? Why are you all mourning? Why are you all weeping? Rejoice in the Lord. Now, where is Paul? He's sitting in prison, and he's writing, right? So, what do we see? 
when people reject us, count it a joy that you have done your part. God, I have brought the gospel to them. I have done my part, but I know that great is my reward in heaven. Yes, great is our reward in heaven. Remember, each one of us will stand before Christ one day to give an account of our life. Yes, nobody can escape that. Paul writes in Corinthians, he says, your works will be judged by fire. And that which stands the test of fire, you will be rewarded for that. So if you have shared the gospel with somebody, maybe they have rejected you, they have ridiculed you, they've laughed at you. You and I must rejoice because great is our reward in heaven. Imagine this, Jesus saying, you know, you shared the gospel with this person, they ridiculed you, they laughed at you, but you still continue to do it. I'm giving you a good reward for that. Here's your reward. Take it. A reward from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Right? Such a joy that is. So it's okay when people make fun of you and ridicule you. Don't, don't take it serious. Don't say, oh, really? I am useless. Okay. So then I better I quit the ministry, better I go home. Don't do that. People will laugh. Imagine, you know, as you guys grow up and you'll you know become pastors, people make fun of you. Can you say, okay, I'll leave, I'll, I'll leave the church, I'll go home. I don't want to be pastor. Everyone are making fun of me. You can't say that. Right? So it's part of part of the ministry. Right? So take it in a way that hey, great is my reward in heaven. Right? Next one, being ashamed. Sometimes we are ashamed and we deliberately hide the fact that we are Christians and we hide it from others. This is wrong. Right? We are ashamed to be a Christian. How many of us are ashamed to pray in the restaurant when the food comes? Yes, I became a believer at all. Everyone knew I'm a believer, but when you go to the restaurant, no, you know, the food is coming. <laughs> You're praying for the food, God. I'm praying. Only thing my eyes are open, but my heart is for you. Yeah. Do you feel like you pray before before you go to the restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, you, it's a good dish. <laughs> okay. But yeah, sometimes these small things can, you know, we may be ashamed of it, right? Uh, it's nothing exciting to front of people to pray about this. Everyone are enjoying and drinking and, uh, you know, having a party. And you're sitting at home, listening to worship songs or uh, spending time with your family. People will say, hey, what? You're not coming for the party. No. Why? Oh, Jesus will see you, no? So, so people said, you know, I was working in IBM when I was working in IBM and uh, yeah, I said, they still always say, come, we're going for a party. They had money, you know, nothing to do. What to do? Go drink, go enjoy. Come and go. I say, no, mother. I said, why? Nothing will happen. You at least drink water. I said, I don't want to come. And now they made fun of me. There were times, friends, I want to go. But I didn't like what they were doing. So I had to make a choice. They did make fun of me. And there were times I felt, oh, I wish I had some friends. I was just, you know, spending nine hours in the office. And nobody is your friend because you have certain values. But I stuck to it. Right? And I'm glad I did that. Because it became a testimony later on. But there will be times when people make you feel ashamed. And, and sometimes we may feel ashamed, but overcome it. Right? Overcome it by praying and saying, Holy Spirit, I know you're with me. And the season of where I'm feeling ashamed, you'll help me to overcome it. Right? Um, maybe, you know, you're talking to your friends, you go back and say, hey, what are you doing? Don't say, I went to Bangalore to look for a job. Say, you went to Bible college. 
if you came in <laughs> to Bible college, you should apply. Don't be ashamed of Bible college. Listen, you in God's kingdom, right? Your understanding should be so much bigger. What they don't understand, God has called you. There's nothing to be ashamed of the gospel. But Jesus is not ashamed of us. So there's nothing to be ashamed of. Right? Is that okay? Right? I don't want you, any of you, to be ashamed of the gospel. People may find, but you still stand firm with what you are, your beliefs. Right? We need to be bold. We need to be unashamed without being rude or brash. Right? Uh, we should learn to let people know that you have faith in Jesus, you have certain principles, and you stand by those principles. Right? Like, Okay. Yeah. If they don't like it, don't say God bless you. Right. Uh, so, so we don't have to be rude. We don't say, "Who are you to tell me?" I'm just saying freedom of speech. All the things. Just say, "Hey, it's okay if you feel that it's not." Um, but maybe some of them in, your, in the group may come back to you and say, who's this God? There's your opportunity. Right? So, so don't always look at the negative things, but you look at what can happen to a situation also. Right? Yeah. But uh, I want to get this through, right? This is very important. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Because we can spend hours and hours in prayer and worship. Is very good, but ministry is not among believers only, it's to be a testimony to the people outside. And when we go outside, are we ashamed or are we able to stand for God and say, No, God, I'll stand for you, stand for certain principles? Right? So, don't be ashamed of Jesus, fear of mixing, okay, almost done. Fear of mixing with uh, unsaved friends. Now, there are times when we feel that, okay, uh, no, I don't want to go with this person because they are not saved. That's very wrong. Right? You can have friends who are from different faiths. Uh, remember, light is more powerful than darkness. Your, the light inside you is more powerful than the darkness outside. Right? So picture that, have that in your heart, and in whatever you do, do it in the right way. Light inside you is bigger than darkness. So it's okay to have unsaved friends, have friends who are from different faith, people who don't believe in Jesus. It's okay to be friends with them, right? Uh, nothing wrong. And when, even as you do that, remember, you must be willing to step into their life and minister to them. There will come seasons where you will get opportunities to share the gospel with them. So we do it with boldness, unashamed. Is that okay? Right. So we'll stop here. We'll continue next week, and um, hopefully we can cover good ground next week. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining online. Have a great week ahead. See you next week.